Hello everybody, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Psychological Health Consultants and Services and Redefining Yourself, a program that was developed with women in mind uh, for those that are coming out of, that are in, needing more information or are recovering from domestic violence, specifically narcissist abuse. Um, I just wanted to come on really quick and just talk about trauma bonding. But before I talk about trauma bonding, let me say this one thing. Uh, and this is to males and females alike. Uh, because the program was focused more on women. And the reason why I focused it on women is because <clears throat> that's the knowledge bank that I have. Uh, and I can, under I can understand it. I can relate to it. And so, but I have met men that have been through narcissistic, um, abusive relationships, and I have met the women who are classified as narcissists, and um, they're equally as um, dysfunctional as a male. And so, I've seen the damage that they have caused as well. But um, based on my experience with the, the males, I speak for or to the females, and so I don't. Um, you know, uh, say that men don't ever go through it. I don't say that, you know, this is not an experience that men have because it's, it's very real for both male and females. Um, but I do want to say this one thing, um, that you can't make anybody stay with you. You can't make anyone love you. You can't make anyone, um, uh, respect you, uh, or even, uh, you know, love you in a relationship. You have to understand this one thing, uh, you know, Nonverbal communication is very powerful. It doesn't matter what comes out of a person's mouth, but it's their actions. You know, so don't dismiss a person's actions. You know, if you're questioning whether that person cares and loves for you, just because they say it, you can't listen to the words that come out of their mouth, but you have to look at the actions. Because if their actions are showing you that they could care less about you, or the actions are showing you, you know, I can understand a mistake, but if you keep repeating the mistake over and over again, it's a choice. And if they're making a choice, to be disrespectful, they're making a choice not to honor the bond or the relationship that you're in with them. They don't care about you. They don't love you. It's just what they're saying. You know, um, the sad part about it though is that once you are in a relationship and trauma bonded to an individual, you know, it's very hard to get away from that relationship because of the fact that in your mind, your hopes are that this person will change. Your hopes are that, you know, one day that this person will love me. And, you know, to have to tell you that the person is never going to change or the person has no desire to change. When we're talking about a narcissist, they have no desire to change because they don't have the capacity to feel empathy for other people. They're very selfish individuals and they're all focused on themselves. Once they have uh, used you the best way that they could and drained you of all the supply and, and determined that you have nothing else to offer them, they normally just move on and discard you and move to another source of supply. Remember in an earlier video, I talked about an automobile. You know, when the automobile has served its purpose, you go purchase another one. You know, of course we may like the car or, you know, but you're gonna move on because it served its purpose. Now it's time to get another car. Well, you look like, you know, for a, a narcissist, you know, that's how they look at you. They look at you an object as an object, you know, for the purpose of uh, moving from one location to another or to fulfill a need that they have, you know, at that particular time. And you have what they need at that particular time, being that you have money to finance their, you know, facade or the money to finance their grandiose, uh, their grandiosity and their uh, illusions of, uh, you know, uh, of wealth and fame and, and you have the money to support that, they connect with you in order to support that. You know, some of them may make a little money, but you have more, so that's just more added to them until they drain you or until you wake up and decide that I'm not gonna share that with you or I'm gonna take that from you because you're drained. They care more about themselves than they care about you. You know, everything that they do for you is gonna be a show to show other people, you know, what a great individual that they are. But if you go back and look, majority of the time is you just paying the bills. You making them look good, you know. Um, so let's just talk really quick um, because I have a client coming in. Uh, let's talk really quick about trauma bond. Um, you know, a trauma bond uh, is, <clears throat> first of all, to understand bond, uh, it's a biological, and this is, I'm getting this from the abuse relations abuseandrelationship.org. This content is a survivor's bond, uh, trauma bonding. Um, but, um, you know, a normal bond is an e a biological and emotional process that makes people more important to each other over time. So, you know, when you're bonding with someone, you know, you know, think about your BFF or someone that you've been best friends with for years and years and years. 
you bonded with that individual, you know that individual, you respect each other, you may be attracted to each other, you know, the bond can be lost though over time, you know, uh, distance, you know, not contacting each other, you know, that bond is kind of lost. Doesn't mean the respect is lost, but you know, the bond is kind of lost. And, um, you know, uh, when we're talking about bonding, bonding is what makes it harder uh, for people to leave a relationship, especially in an abusive relationship. The longer the trauma the longer the trauma continues or the longer the abuse continues, the stronger the uh, bond is uh, to the individual. And it's not a healthy bond, it's a traumatic bond. That term trauma bonding was created by um, a gentleman by the name of Patrick Karn. And he described it as a, a misuse of fear, excitement, sexual feelings, and sexual physiology physiology to entangle another person and this is normally used by a primary aggressor or an abuser uh, in this case a narcissist and uh, the, the 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 bonding is using those emotions um, ill 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 use of those emotions to bond a victim to themselves uh, they have no bond to you but they use that to pull you in and lock you in uh, to, to bond you know with them um, let's see here are some, want to give you some, uh, some signs that you could be in a traumatic bond with an individual. It's a constant pattern of non-performance. Your partner promises you things but keeps behaving contrary. If a person cares about you, you know, one thing, they don't change for you because if they change for you, it's not a uh, permanent change. But they change to better the relationship. They change because they have empathy. They change because they care, you know, to change uh, for uh, for themselves and make the relationship better. If it's hurting you, you know, let me see what I can do to change myself. But these are constant promises to a victim that they're going to change, but they never deliver. So remember I said it's the actions and not the words. They continue doing the same thing just to keep you quiet, to be quiet for a minute, and then they go right back to doing what they're doing. Um, they're creating a trauma bond with you and they could care less. Uh, it, that's not respect nor love. Um, others are disturbed by something that is said or done to you in your relationship, but you brush it off. So you explain it off. You oh, You're an enabler. You know, you explain off their behavior, but everyone around you is looking at you like, oh my gosh, you don't think that's not okay? You know, and, and you blow it off because you really have this person in mind. I, you know, I love this person, and in their, and you know, when they're, they're going, you're making excuses for the person. You know, you make excuses for the person. They had a bad childhood, and I understand, and if I leave now, you know, I'll just add to the trauma. Well, they're traumatizing you, and they know that you think like that, you know, and, and but you're making excuses for the person, but they're not, you know, what about you and your trauma? You know, what about you and the things that you've been through? They're adding to the problem. They're not a help to the problem, they're adding to the problem. Um, you feel stuck in the relationship because you see no way out. You can't figure out how to get out the relationship, um, or you, you just it can't, you can't imagine not being in the relationship. You don't know anything else. You keep having the same fights with your partner that go around in circles with no real winner. You know, even when they argue with you over and over again, they'll say the same thing eight hundred thousand times. Um, you know, to force you to try to change your mind or, you know, try to keep you awake at night to force you to think like them or force you to change your mind. But, you know, in the end, no one really wins the, 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 the argument. You're punished or given a silent treatment by your partner when you say or do something that's wrong. They say is wrong. You may not think it's wrong, but that they say is wrong. So you're punished because of something that you said that they don't like. Um, you feel unable to detach your relationship even though you don't truly trust or even like the person you're in it with. Some of you guys are in a relationship with these narcissists and you can't stand the narcissist. You know, hate is a very strong word, but even to a point where in your mind you think, like, I hate this individual. I don't even know why I'm in this relationship with this person. But you're trauma bonded to this individual. You don't like them. You don't like anything about them. Uh, even in your mind you think, like, I don't even love this individual. I don't even want to be here. But it's convenient. You don't know anything else. Uh, when you try and leave, you are plagued by such longing to get you back with your partner, you feel it might destroy you. Okay, let me read that again. When you try and leave, you are plagued by such longing to get back with your partner, you feel it might destroy you. So when you do leave, you know, the emotions is like a, a drug addiction. The emotions arise where it's almost like it's a drug and you need that drug. I have to have that drug. I need to know where that person is at. I need to talk to him, you know, in order to calm you back down. Um, let's see here. Um... You know, one of the things that I always say over and over again, 
don't ask a victim why they stay because when you ask a victim uh, why they stay you're re-victimizing them and what you're implicating is that they're weak uh, they're failure uh, and 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 it causes a lot of shame like why can't I get myself out of it you have to understand trauma bonds. Trauma bonds is loyalty to a person who is destructive. Um, and the, uh, you know, let me think. Um, let's see. I've already said that, you know, consistent pattern of non-performance. Uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's an inconsistent reinforcement. Trauma bonds occur in relationship involving inconsistent reinforcement, such as those with addicts or alcoholics or domestic violence situation. Dysfunctional marriages also cause trauma bonds because they're always a time when things seem to be normal. And so the victim is looking for the normal. You know, if I can get beyond this storm to get to the normal. Beyond the storm to get to the normal. Um, let's see. Um, you know, that victim is always holding on to a promise. Uh, the victims stay because they're holding on to the elusive promise or hope. Uh, there are always manipulation involved in that. Victims are prey to uh, the manipulation because they are willing to tolerate anything for the payoff, which is the elusive promise and ever-present hope for fulfillment of some deeply personal need within the victim. Um, so you're always looking at what's right, but you can't see what's wrong, uh, even though the what's wrong is speaking louder than the what's right. You know, and... Um, Let's see. So we got beyond that. We got past that. Gave you some, um, let's see. Um, okay, let's go to another one that I found pretty interesting, which is, um, let's see. You know, the question may come up in your mind, you know, why can't I let go of this individual? Um, there is a term called the Stockholm Syndrome. Some of you heard that, the Stockholm Syndrome. And it was a condition that um, was named after, and you can find this on NarcissisticPersonality.com, uh, trauma bonding. Um, but this condition was, as you know, I think it was the Patty Hearst story, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that was it. Uh, but it was named after a real life situation where a group of um, hostages became emotionally attached to their kidnappers. Um, and what happened was is uh, the trauma bonding occurred because of life-threatening situation where the victim is literally feared dying at the hands of the toxic abusive partner. Uh, trauma bonding is more descriptive of an attachment dilemma that occurs from a type of trauma caused to our emotions, such as betrayal, neglect, and it happens over and over and over and over again. And this type of bonding that can easily occur via passive-aggressive manipulation, sex, lies, silent treatments, uh, and those are forms of narcissist control. <clears throat> so, remember the narcissist is very cunning, um, and let's see, and what they do is they streamline the victim's codependency to a point of, of least resistance, so they're not resistant anymore. Um, you know, the sad part about it is, is that they don't get trained to do this, but they do it so much that it becomes, you know, secondhand to them. Uh, that they, they just know this. They watch behaviors. They know. Remember, they're always watching. They're always paying attention. It's not to bond with you, but it's to see how to control you. Um, and they always try to lock in that narcissist uh, supply by creating trauma bonds. And, and it's called seduce and discard. And so they figure out an easy way uh, to turn, uh, turn us into an enabler's. Okay, uh, another one the psychologist called, uh, um, let's see, so the condition that leads to trauma bonding focuses on two powerful sources of reinforcement, reoccurring in succession over and over again, so over time, and it perf it's in perfectly timed intervals. Um, and psychologists call the reinforcement arousal jag, which actually refers to excitement before the trauma, arousal, and the peace of surrender afterward, jag. Uh, and it reflects on the narcissist's behavior, creating trauma bonds. And he's been doing this all his life, or she's been doing this all their life. They give a little, then take it away. They give a little and take it away. But it's in perfect timing um, to, to, to groom you, to train you, to uh, reinforce, reinforce the, the behavior, the, the responses. Um, they disappear, and then they reappear. Silence, then chaos. So they create this illusion of twisted excitement that reinforces traumatic bond between you and them. Um, they feel a connection only because the connection is to the excitement alone and not to the person that they're doing this to. Uh, and normally they have multiple partners, and in a multiple partners, uh, excuse me, it doubles and triples that excitement for them. You know, um, and that's why hoovering is so exciting. Hoovering is to get you back into their grips. Hoovering meaning to suck you back in. Um, you know, the excitement uh, uh, before the trauma, the betrayal, or the neglect is created during the devalue stage. So this is the point right before the discard. 
So think about it. They're playing a game. You know, they're playing a game with you. Uh, the torment of cognitive dissonance. Dissonance is when you're struggling with, um, and I have the term here. Let me find it to make it a little easier to explain. Uh, but cognitive dissonance is like, you know, I know I'm not, I know this is not a good relationship, but I'm so bonded with the person I can't leave. You know, I know this person is not good for me, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't feel happy. I, I feel unsafe, you know. So it's that constant struggle back and forth of knowing that I shouldn't be here, knowing that I need to leave, but I can't leave because I may hurt hurt the individual or maybe that a person will get better. So your constant struggle back and forth, you know, uh, and it's called the torment of cognitive dissonance. Um, let's see. Another one is a uh, piece of the surrender. Uh, so uh, what the, what the um, perpetrator will do is uh, meticulously time a maximum effect, effect and usually follows through with a silent treatment so that lasts a little longer and a little longer each time. I remember when, when I was getting a silent treatment, I was happy because I don't have to talk. Uh, but of course, then came the chaos right afterward. Um, there's makeup sex. You know, and, and some uh, uh, victims are waiting for the makeup sex. You know, they just want that, you know, I have to get beyond this chaos to get to this benefit. You know, so, and this is how they're pulling you in. That's how they're pulling you in. Uh, and you know they're chaotic. They are uh, chaotic. Um, and so hopefully I've given you a little information about uh, trauma bonds. If you do have any questions, uh, and I know this is kind of uh, brief uh, because I do have a client coming in. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little rushed for time, so I apologize. But hopefully you got something out of that, you know, give you some ideas, some basic information about trauma bonds, you know, because this is what makes it so hard for victims to leave their abuser, especially, um, you know, in a narcissistic uh, relationship where they're purposely playing this game. And it's sad that they would have so much disregard for human life and emotion when, you know, as women, we normally want to, you know, our hearts are to love. Not every woman is like that. Now, don't get me wrong. Not every woman is like that. Some, you know, some are abusive and, and have problems with empathy themselves. But, you know, typically a woman wants to love. They want to nurture. You know, they want to have a family. They, they, they love the, the concept of family. That's a problem. You can't fall in love with the concept, you know. Uh, but you create good bonds and good relationship, respectful relationship uh, between two individuals. And to have another human being take advantage of that, take advantage of your innocence or to purposely play a game and, and devalue you, have no value for you whatsoever. And to play these games, you know, men and women alike, I tell you that don't ever force someone to stay in a relationship with you. You know, take what they say and take it seriously. If they've shown you their behavior, take it seriously. That's exactly what it's like. You know, you can stay in it and continue to be traumatized. You know, you have to make up the decision that this person probably doesn't care. Your fear is that they'll get with someone else and they'll treat them better than you. You know, in most cases, that's not the case. You know, they'll start off where they left off with you or it's a brand new supply. So they have to start all over with grooming this individual. But a narcissist is not going to change. They're not going to change. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, most of them, remember, they, they live this facade of perfection, this grandiose, you know, so of course they're going to present themselves the best way possible on social media you know pictures of them and their new supply you know all these beautiful things that you've always wanted to do you know really is to 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 uh to punish you to make you look bad but also to pull in this next supply because you don't know what level this next supply or the new supply is on but they were just like you you know innocently going into a relationship and a lot of times what they'll do is of course they're not going to have anything positive to say about you you're always going to look like you know the monster and the worst person and you're so terrible and this is what you do because they need to create an alliance with the new supply so that you can't influence them that you can't say anything or they won't discover or you won't disclose anything about the narcissist to the new supply don't concern yourself or running after the new supply and trying to tell the new supply what this what this uh, narcissist is like eventually they'll figure it out and then they'll go looking for you some of them you know I wonder what it was like some of them we even reach out I've had people reach out to me and ask me questions you know uh, but trust you me they'll figure it out you don't have to go and explain you don't have to go and warn them leave it alone you know if they discarded you take that as a blessing you know take that as a blessing that oh my gosh you found some I mean it's not it's not good for the new supply but you be free you heal you know that's why it's not good to jump into a relationship before you have closure you know narcissists don't believe in closure they believe in open doors everything is an open door there is no closure when it comes to a narcissist and so what you're gonna end up having to do is just forgive and move on because they're not the type they're gonna seek forgiveness they're not gonna ask you for and even if 
they do is superficial just to see if the door is still open with you. But there are sometimes you have to walk away and just and let it go. You know, and that's the hardest thing, especially, you know, the biggest thing in addictions is not to go back to the addiction. Sometimes you have to cut off the areas that you hang out with, the places that you go, the social medias that you used to be a part of to get away from this narcissist. You know, the thing about leaving, you know, drug addictions is getting it out of your system. You have to get this narcissist out of your system. And when the emotions are so strong, you know, my advice to you, when the emotions are so strong, don't act upon your emotions. Sometimes you may slip, but you, they're always, they'll always present themselves. They're always let you know and you'll always find out eventually that you know what this person has not changed no matter how good it sounds they'll tell you what they want just to see if the door is still open with you but just like a drug addict you have to get them out of your system and that takes time it takes process I heard someone on a reality show say you know the best way to get over the last man you were with is to get a new man that's about the dumbest advice I've ever heard you know you're infected and 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 chaotic on the inside so you're going to connect with someone else and either destroy them or you've connected with something that's because you, you're going to look for the familiar you're going to look for the familiar pain you're going to look for the familiar and you're going to get in the next time you may be killed and that's what we're trying to avoid trying to avoid you being killed and the thing you have to do is you're going to have to recover you're going to have to get this out of your system it's like a drug and suboxone and and uh you know inpatient intense inpatient treatment you know the, the drug has to get out of your system and the further you step away from, you know, the situation and the more you begin to heal and the more information you begin to receive as you step away, the more you begin to see the game that they play. And the shame behind it for a lot of us is I cannot believe that as intelligent as I am or I cannot believe that I fell for this. You know, and they sound really intelligent. They sound really smart. Some of them are very educated. But when you step back and look at the game that they played and some of the things they say, you'll be surprised. You're like, this is the smartest dumb person I have ever met in my life that lets you know where you are let you know how intelligent you are and there was something about you that they attached themselves to and so you're not as dumb as you think you are hopefully this helped you today please subscribe to my youtube channel dr carmen bryant overcoming narcissist abuse you're welcome to go to my facebook page which is uh, psychological health consultants and services stay tuned because i'm going to change it to redefining yourself but please go on there i will post the videos you're welcome to contact me, Dr. Carmen Bryant, D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at Outlook.com. Um, I'm working on developing the coaching part of uh, this program. I am a, a certified life coach. I'm a clinical trauma professional, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor in the state of Washington. So I do not do um, clinical counseling or counseling outside of the lines of Washington. And currently, uh, I am not connected to the telehealth. Uh, so I do do um, life coaching. Um, you know, when you come to me, do not ask me to help you uh, stay in the relationship and change the person, I will not do it, you know, but I will help you um, move yourself out of the situation and we're going to, um, you know, connect you to your tribe, connect you to resources and to rebuild you from where you were, to detach from those trauma bonds and I'm there to be a support system and connect you to a support system. Hey, thanks again for watching. Hopefully this has helped. You know, email me, tell me what you think, give me some comments and send me some ideas. This right here was a question that someone asked me, you know, about trauma bonds and, and the difficulty of women leaving, um, you know, abusive relationship because of the trauma bonds. And so she posed a question to me and I just want to talk about it a little bit. Remember, believe them when they show you their behavior, believe them. And sometimes it's better to let go of what's in your hand because it's hurting you more to hold it in your hand than to just let it go. And trust me, this is not the end of your life. You know, out of the millions of people on this earth, that's one individual that has totally tore up your esteem, tore up, you know, the way that you thought about yourself. But once you begin to heal, you can attract the right people into your uh, life. Thanks again, and hopefully this has helped. Send this, share this with someone. Someone is watching. Someone needs some help. Somebody needs someone to say something. Someone needs, you know, to be the voice or to hear someone say uh, something about this. That's how I came out of my situation. I heard people begin to talk about it, and they got beyond the shame. I got beyond the shame, and so I'm here to talk to you about it because I understand I've been there. I am a survivor. I am a clinician, and I'm here to help you. If there's anything that I can do, I understand where you're at because I had to go through the process myself. And so you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.